Do I have to consent to you? No, no, by now, no. <laughs> <laughs> there is something to click. Okay, look, so so welcome everyone uh, to the evening edition for us of MOPA and the morning edition for, for, for Zach. And thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us. And I will not read the title, but everyone can see it. So uh, welcome. Let's go ahead. Cool. cool. Um, thanks. Uh, yeah, so to, I mean, today I'm going to talk about uh, end extending. Um, in extending models of, um, of subsystems of, um, of set theory, so subsystems of ZFC, and I'm particularly interested in, um, in end extensions with no, um, no least new element. So I'll talk about um, topless uh, power set preserving end extensions and rank extensions of, um, of models of set theory. Uh, and this is joint work with Ali. So um, cool. Um, so throughout this talk, um, L will be used um, to denote, as usual, um, the language of set theory. Um, so this is first order logic um, uh, with a binary membership relation, which we'll, uh, we'll write like this, as usual. Um, cool. um, so if, um, if M is a structure in the language of set theory, so an underlying set together with an interpretation of the membership um, symbol, uh, and A is a point in this structure, um, then I'm going to use A star um, as an abbreviation for the, the set of all points in M uh, that M thinks belong to A, so for the extension of A, essentially. Um, so there are two, um, uh, there are two generalizations of the Levy classes of, um, of formulae that I want to talk about. Um, so first of all, suppose that I've got a language L prime that contains the language of set theory, um, and, uh, you know, it might possibly be the case that this, or um, the reason I'm giving you this definition is that it might, may be the case that L prime um, contains function symbols. So define the, um, uh, the bounded um, set of L prime formulae, or uh, delta naught L prime formulae, um, to be the smallest class of L prime formulae um, that contains all the atomic formulae, um, is closed under the, connect, uh, the connectives of propositional logic, um, and bounded quantification, where we allow our um, quantifiers to be bounded um, by any term in, in our language L prime. Um, so once we have the, uh, the bounded L prime formulae, um, then we can just define um, the sigma one L prime formulae, the pi one L prime formulae, and the delta one L prime formulae in the usual way. Cool. Um, so, I'll also uh, have cause to consider the Takahashi classes of formulae. Um, so the, uh, the bounded in subset formulae or delta naught P formulae just, uh, is the smallest class of formulae that contains all atomic formulae, uh, is closed under the connectives of propositional logic uh, and is closed under bounded quantification where we allow our quantifiers this time to be bounded um, both by the membership relation and by the subset relation. Um, and then uh, once we have the delta naught P formulae or bounded in subset formulae, um, we can define the classes um, sigma 1P, pi 1P, delta 1P um, from delta naught P in the usual way. Cool. Okay, so, um, so I'll be talking about um, end extending subsystems of ZFC. Um, so I wanted to introduce a few of the, uh, the subsystems of, um, of ZFC that I'll be using as my base theories. Um, so probably the weakest subsystem of ZFC uh, I'll consider today will be um, kripke platic set theory or KP. Um, so KP is the set theory um, whose axioms are uh, extensionality, um, pair, uh, empty set, union, um, so bounded separation, so separation for delta naught formulae, um, bounded collection, um, and pi one foundation. So, um, so some authors um, include uh, full class foundation in, um, uh, in kripke platic set theory. Um, but um, today, and for the purposes of, um, of this talk, um, in kripke platic set theory, I'm gonna re restrict the foundation available um, to just pi one classes. Cool. So I think, I think this is becoming the, um, the standard nowadays. Um, so KPP 
um, is obtained from Kripke Platic set theory by adding infinity, um, power set, uh, delta naught p collection, and pi 1p foundation. Um, so the idea is, is um, and KPP is the L theory, um, such that um, you know, if you took take a model of KPP um, and expand the language um, to include um, the power set operation, um, then this model would satisfy um, uh, all the all the analogs of the axioms of KP um, in this expanded language. Um, so it's um, you know so uh, so KPP is the the set theory that kind of facilitates um, you know in the same way that Kripke Platic set theory um, facilitates sigma one recursions, um, KPP kind of facilitates um, uh, sigma one recursions involving the power set operation. Um, so another uh, subsystem of ZFC that I'll consider is most. Um, so most, uh, which is an abbreviation for Mostovsky. Um, uh, so Mostovsky set theory or most is obtained from KP um, by adding infinity power set um, sigma one separation in the axiom of choice. Um, so note that it's um, note that um, uh, KPP contains more collection um, than most. Um, but most contains obviously the axiom of choice um, and more separation. Um, so they're kind of, uh, these, these are, um, you know, it's, it's not the case that one is contained in the other. Um, uh, yeah. So the idea is, um, is most um, set theory is kind of the minimal set theory that's required uh, in some sense um, to prove the, um, the Mostovsky collapsing lemma. So every uh, um, every um, well found topped well founded extensional relation is isomorphic to a transitive set. Um, so I just wanted to note um, a few important properties of these um, these subsystems of ZFC. Um, so uh, um, so the set theory KP, so Kripke Platic set theory, um, is able to do sigma one recursions, um, and this means that it's um, that for any uh, any set X. Um, it proves that um, uh, that that set has a minimal is contained in a minimal transitive set, uh, which we'll call the transitive closure of X. Um, KP is able to construct for every ordinal alpha um, the alpha level of the constructible hierarchy L alpha, um, and is also able to define the rank function on set, so that the function which sends any set X. Um, to its ordinal rank. Um, so what's more, um, KP is able to prove that the graphs of all these functions are quite simply defined. Um, so, um, so the graph of the function that sends alpha to L alpha, the graph of the function um, that sends X to the transitive closure of X, um, and the graph of the function um, that sends uh, X to the rank of X um, are all uh, delta one definable. Um, so in addition, uh, one can see that the graph of the function um, that sends x to the transitive closure of x is also um, delta naught p definable. Okay, so as I as I kind of indicated before, um, the theory KPP um, is kind of um, is set up to um, in order to facilitate kind of sigma one recursions involving um, the power set operation. Um, so this means that um, that KPP is able to construct. Um, the alpha level of the cumulative hierarchy, V alpha. Uh, and it, um, it's able to prove that um, the graph of this function um, or the graph of this function is, um, is then simply definable. It's uh, delta one P definable. So, um, uh, so most, even though it's kind of not kind of set up to do recursions, obviously it can do all the same recursions as, um, as KP, um, but nevertheless, uh, um, it's able to show that for all cardinals kappa, um, the set H less than or equal to kappa, so the set of all sets um, whose transitive closures of cardinality less than or equal to kappa um, exists as a set for every cardinal. Um, and uh, the graph of the function that sends kappa, a cardinal kappa, um, to H less than or equal to kappa um, is, uh, is delta 1P. Cool. Okay, so so today I'll um, 
um, I want to discuss some um, you know, end extensions of, um, of models of set theory. Um, so there are actually um, you know, several different um, notions of, um, of end extensions of, um, uh, of structures in the language of set theory. So I'll, I want to um, kind of go through these different, um, different notions now. Um, so suppose I've got two structures in the language of set theory, uh, M and N, uh, and suppose that these structures are both um, uh, models of kripke platic set theory, at least. So they satisfy, you know, some kind of, some kind of basic set theory, right? Um, so we say that N is an end extension um, of M and write this. Um, if, uh, if M is a substructure of N, um, and in, in the process of, um, of going from M to N, um, there are no uh, new members of any points in, in M added in N. Or in other words, um, M is a transitive subclass um, of N, right? So this is, um, you know, so for example, um, L is a, um, well, um, the universe is an end extension of L or something like that. In fact, the universe is an end extension of any ordinal. Um, so there's, a, there's also a stronger notion of um, power set preserving end extension. Um, so we say that, uh, that N is a power set preserving end extension of M uh, and write this. Um, if N is an end extension of M uh, and in going from M to N, um, no new subsets of points in M are added in, in N. So, um, so, both, so N and M um, both contain all the same subsets of, of any, every, any points they have in common. Okay. Um, and then uh, when I'm talking about uh, power set preserving end extensions, um, I want to distinguish between um, uh, topless and blunt extensions. Um, so we say that um, we say that n is a is a topless um, power set preserving end extension of M, um, and write this. Um, if n is a non-trivial um, power set preserving end extension of N, M, sorry. Um, so if n is a, is a power set preserving end extension of M, um, and there is an is, there is some new point in N. Um, but there's no um, there's no least kind of new point in N, and the, the most convenient way to say this in set theory um, is to say it as um, as an overspill condition, right? Um, so we say that there's no point that's um, in N and not in M, but contains only points in M. Right? Um, and then if a um, if a non-trivial if a non-trivial power set preserving end extension N of M um, is, uh, is not topless, um, then we say that it's blunt. Um, so in other words, um, if we've got a non-trivial power set preserving end extension N of M, um, and there is a point in N that's not in M, um, and that point contains only points from M, um, then we say that this, uh, this end extension is blunt. So I've, I've given myself a blank slide here. So if I can... Um, so, I mean, um, you know, so end extensions can look like this, right? I mean, all that's required of an end extension um, um, is that it's a transitive subclass, right? So this is, um, this is kind of the picture corresponding um, to an end extension. Sorry, excuse my handwriting. Um, but uh, if we actually have a power set preserving end extension, um, then power set preserving end extensions sort of really look like this, right? My handwriting is terrible, sorry. Um, and uh, and then if we have a power set preserving end extension, um, 
you know, so it's it's going to be um, topless um, if there's kind of no kind of least point in here. So there's no there's no the, these points in in the new points in N kind of co co finally approach M, um, and it's blunt if there really is a point here that is not in in N, not in M, but only contains points from from M. So there really is some kind of point that sits in N that sits on top of M. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of the the intuition behind these these different um, different. May I interrupt with a quick question? Yeah, sure, absolutely. In the context of working in with these weaker theories, so you say blunt, you know, you have like a it contains like so maybe you have like the ordinals as an element. Does that imply in this context that you have all of M as a single element? Um, oh yeah. Or rather, okay, what so you yeah. need, like what conditions give you that? Maybe it's a better way of phrasing the question. Um, uh, what I mean, what conditions you exactly need? I'm I'm not uh, I'm not sure, but certainly um you know with with fairly modest um with fairly modest conditions, once you have a blunt, uh, with with fairly modest background theory, once you have a blunt um uh once you have a blunt extension, um you you get a point that contains exactly the points in in M. Um, so certainly, for example, I mean K you know um KPP is enough. Sure, because, right. Uh, I think that's pretty clear. Is KP yeah. enough? Um, I mean, that's uh, yeah. So that's a good question. Um, let I mean KP. So can you? I mean, so the, I mean, you, you know, because what you want, right, is you want some kind of stratification of your universe, right? Which, right. Which you kind of have in um, uh, in KPP because you've got all the ranks, right? Um, and you have in most because you've got these H cappers. Um, so, I mean, are you miss? I mean, you certainly have such a stratification of your universe in KP plus V equals L, for example, because mm -hmm. then you have L. Um, I mean, can you do something with um, uh, L of A for some, you know, find some L of, you know, if you've got this point, well, um, I'm yeah I, I I'm not sure I'm not sure it's an it's an interesting question right okay all right thank you it, I was it seemed like there might be something there but maybe it's difficult oh I, um so I've certainly uh you know I've certainly mentioned that you can um on the next slide I think I'm mentioning that you can definitely do it in um in KPP in most right um but yeah I think uh yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure about KP though. All right. Well, thank you. So the picture changes a lot if things go non-standard at that blunt point. In other um, words, if everything's a standard model, then a, an old-fashioned rank extension would be a blunt power extend end extension. Uh, yep. Yep. But if things, but if things break, say at that point then it gets more interesting because now m is no longer an element of uh, probably is probably no longer an element of the extension yeah 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 um yeah so this you know something um you know so if you have a well if you have a blunt yeah so under most circumstances um if you have a blunt extension then you will end up having m as a as an element of your of mm -hmm. your model uh, and in contrast, I mean, if you have a topless um, end extension, then you know your your model M will kind of look like a cut of your. Ah, of your, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I also wanted to talk about. So there's one um, one uh, additional notion of end extension that I wanted to talk about. So a rank extension, um, we say that N is a rank extension of M. Um, if um, if n is a is a power set preserving end extension of m, um, and in the pro and all the new things which are added in n are actually of rank which is strictly greater than everything in m, right? Um, and then we can define the notion of um, topless rank extension and um, uh, and blunt rank extension um, in the same way as we do for power set preserving end extensions. Um, so. Uh, um, so one thing I wanted to notice that uh, note that if um, um, if M and N are both models of um, of KPP, 
um, then, um, then power set preserving and rank extension coincide. So they're, they're actually the same thing, right? Um, you know, so, and this is just really because, um, you know, a model of KP, P really is kind of a union of ranks, right? So when you take a power set preserving end extension, you you um, you really are adding to the top of those ranks, right? Um, but um, this is uh, you know not necessarily the case um, if this M here um, doesn't uh, doesn't satisfy KPP, right? Um, and I've uh, so I've got two examples here that show show that both weakening um, the collection and weakening the foundation in KPP, um, you know, will break this this uh, this kind of um, correspondence. Um, so, firstly, uh, suppose that if n is any model of um, of ZF plus V equals L, um, then it's uh, reasonably easy to see that um, um, that H alpha omega in this model. Just consider H alpha omega in this model. Um, this uh, this will be a model of most plus full separation, right? It'll, it'll be realized as a set um, and will satisfy all the axioms of most. Um, uh, and, um, you know, because it's realized as a set in your model, um, it will be a blunt, uh, N will be a blunt power set preserving end extension of M, um, but it's not a rank extension. Well, why is that? Um, well, it's pretty clear that there are uh, sets of rank omega plus omega plus omega um, that aren't in H aleph omega, um, but omega plus omega plus omega is a countable ordinal, right? So it will be will be a member of um, uh, of that set. Um, and so note here that most plus full separation, um, it uh, it has less collection than KPP, so it doesn't have the doesn't have as much collection as KPP. Um, so kind of in the other direction with um, with the uh, foundation, failures of foundation. Um, so if we consider any um, any omega non-standard model of ZF plus V equals L, um, and then in this model consider the union um, of all the extensions of the H L of Ns um, for every standard natural number N, um, then uh, M is gonna sit as a cut um, inside, uh, inside this model N, right? Mm -hmm. And essentially, for the reasons that it's um, that this model M is a union of H's, um, it satisfies all the axioms of most, right? Um, and uh, and since it's actually kind of sits as a cut um, inside N, um, it's also going to satisfy um, pi one collection. So actually, um, so N is a is a topless power set preserving end extension of M, um, but it's not a rank extension of M because this time there are sets of rank omega plus omega um, that are not in M, um, but omega plus omega again is a countable ordinal. Um, so it exists in, in M. So cool. And then um, uh, this was um, uh, related to um, the question before. Um, so blunt, um, yeah. So I mean, you know, as long as there's enough background um, set theory, right? Um, and I'm not sure if as I said before, I'm not sure if KP is enough, um, but certainly if both of your models um, satisfy KPP, so I mean, if you have kind of um, these ranks available for you to use, um, then once you have a blunt end extension, um, then you can um, you can actually find a set in the in the blunt end extension um, that contains exactly the points um, that are in M. So M is realized as a set, um, and under this circumstance. Um, you know, this circumstance, obviously, then any instance of um, full separation uh, can be realized as, um, uh, re well, can be reduced to an instance of bounded separation. Um, so you get uh, full separation in, in M. Um, and of course, you get, I think, um, you know, much, actually, I mean, this is, this, I mean, you get much more, right? I mean, you, um, you get, for example, if um, if M is omega non-standard, um, then um, you'd also get things like recursive saturation um, of M, right? Because you'd actually kind of realize M as a set. Um, so, um, you know, I suppose this is a, what kind of, um, if you've got an omega standard model, what kind of saturation do you get? I and mean, that's, that's maybe a, um, 
so uh, so the same thing you know the same thing happens if um um if both your models m and n are, are models of most um so this time using instead of using ranks use the h's um and if you've got a blunt um a blunt end extension um then you can realize m all the you can realize m as an actual set of n um and reduce any instance of um a full separation to bounded separation in n cool um, okay, so so in the in the context of arithmetic, um, Paris and Wilkie, uh, I mean, able were able to completely classify um, uh, the countable um, non-standard. Um, sorry, were able to completely classify the countable models of I delta naught that had end extensions, right? Um, and in particular, a consequence of um, uh, of their analysis was. Um, that every countable non-standard model um, of i delta naught plus x plus b sigma one um, has a proper end extension that satisfies i delta naught. Um, uh, so Ali has used this uh, used this result to classify the countable um, uh, structures that can be realized as the largest initial segment of a model of i delta naught um, that's pointwise fixed by a non-trivial automorphism of um, um, by a non-trivial automorphism of a model of I delta naught. Um, and then uh, this, these techniques, um, you know, the same techniques were then, um, were then used um, uh, to show that if, um, if M is a countable model um, of most uh, plus uh, pi one collection um, that has a topless power set preserving end extension that satisfies um, most plus pi one collection, um, then M can be realized as, um, as the largest initial segment um, pointwise fixed by non-trivial automorphism of a model of most. Um, so this was a, this is kind of my motivation um, for wanting to you know wanting to understand um, which countable um, which kind of countable models of most plus pi one um, collection have um, have these topless um, power set preserving end extensions. I mean what it what it will end up, yielding i hope is kind of a, you know an analog of um you know the paris and wilkie analysis for um you know for subsystems of set theory um okay so i mean what do we um what do we know about end extending um models of set theory um so uh harvey friedman um uh classified completely classified the countable transitive structures um, that can be realized as the standard sets um, of non-standard models of KPP. Um, so, yeah, and his classification shows that if, um, if S is a recursively enumerable L theory um, that contains KPP, um, and if M is, an, is a countable transitive model of S, um, then there actually exists a topless rank extension um, N of M that, um, that satisfies S. Right. So, um, so every kind of countable transitive model of, um, of in particular, every countable transitive model um, of KPP has a topless rank end, ex end extension. Um, so, uh, for models of um, uh, models of um, most plus pi one collection, um, we know that if M is a countable um, recursively saturated model of most plus pi one collection. Um, then M has a um, um, N ha M has a topless um, power set preserving end extension N um, that satisfies the same theory as M. Um, so this is uh, this is actually a you know a self embedding result. Um, so um, you know so if, if M is a countable recursively saturated model of most um, plus pi one collection, um, you can show that it's actually isomorphic um, to you know a um, a cut of itself um, that preserves power with the same with the same power sets, okay. um, and uh, so this uh, this next result is kind of a, I mean this is the analog in set theory of saying that well if I've got a model of i delta naught that has an end extension I know that that model of i delta naught must have satisfied b sigma one right um, so we get a you know you get a similar um, a similar thing happening in set theory. Um, so if M and N are models of most, um, and N is a topless power set preserving um, end extension of M, um, then it must be the case that 
um, you know, that the, the fact that M is realized as a cut of N makes it means that it satisfies some collection um, and pi one collection is what, uh, what it appears to satisfy. Um, okay, so this um, so this this kind of raises the question. So we know that every um, um, you know, so note that um, that every um, countable transitive model of most plus pi one collection um, is a is also a countable transitive model of um, of KPP, right? Because the kind of the difference between these two theories is the foundation that's available. Um, so um, so what we we know that every countable transitive model. Um, of most plus pi one collection has a topless power set preserving end extension, and every um, uh, every rec countable recursively saturated model um, has a topless power set preserving end extension. So, is it the case that every countable model of most plus pi one collection um, have a topless power set preserving end extension? Um, and then, um, does Friedman's um, theorem actually hold for every? Um, countable model of KPP. So does every every countable model, not just the, the countable transitive ones, um, have a topless um, rank extension that satisfies KPP? Um, so these are the two questions I'm going to address today. Um, and I'll give a partial answer to the first question. And I think we've got a complete, a complete answer, a complete positive answer to the second question. Um, cool. So I just wanted to mention um, a, an and so a few other results about end extending subsystems of set theory um, that uh, um, you know that are that are kind of known. Um, so uh, so results of Rousseau um, from 1987 um, show that every countable model um, of kripke platic set theory plus sigma one foundation um, has a non-trivial end extension, uh, and it's actually uh, kind of using the same techniques as Rousseau. These are the techniques that I'm going to use in um, in the talk today. Um, so Matt um, has a result from um, the late seventies, um, which says that um, if M is a um, a countable model, or a, you know, so a consequence of his results um, are that if M is a is a countable model of um, of KP plus some um, plus pi one collection, um, then um, uh, then M has a um, a non trivial end extension. Um, that's uh, that's sigma two elementary, um, and uh, you know, so I've been unable to uh, unable to see how um, you know making even if M satisfies more set theory, um, how one uses um, uh, Matt's text techniques to kind of get N to satisfy more set theory. Um, and uh, recently, um, uh, Paul Gorbov has shown that. Um, if M is a, um, a countable non-standard model of um, KPP plus um, sigma one P separation, um, then uh, then M has a um, N, M has a, a topless rank extension um, uh, that satisfies the same theory as M. Um, and so again, this is actually a self-embedding result. Um, so this this can be viewed as an analog of um, you know Friedman self-embedding theorem, saying that you know every um, every non-standard model of this theory is isomorphic to a cut of itself. Um, so there's some things that are known. Um, so the idea is, uh, is I want to use um, kind of a Barwise's notion of, um, uh, of the cover of admiss an admissible set um, to, to produce end extensions of models of set theory. Um, so uh, this is uh, actually one part of Barwise's book that really does use um, the error elements. Um, so I want to talk about some, um, uh, I need to talk about kripke platic set theory with Ur elements. Um, so let L star be, um, be obtained from the language of set theory um, by adding a new unary predicate U whose intended interpretation is to distinguish sets from Ur elements. Um, a second binary membership relation, um, just to make, uh, make life difficult. Um, and uh, a unary function symbol F. So, um, so then I, I also want to introduce a new language um, that I'm going to call L star P. Um, and this is, uh, this is obtained from L star um, by adding um, a unary function symbol P. Um, and uh, P, you know, P's intended interpretation really is the power set operation. So you can always think of um, the P as hopefully it will always be 
you know, really, really the power set function. Okay, so now, um, now our language looks complicated. Um, and indeed, um, our structures um, look more complicated. Um, so the idea is, is that um, an L star P structure um, is going to be a, like a structure that will write like this. Um, and it's going to be, I mean, the structures we'll be interested in um, will be models of um, models of kind of um, Kripke, the analog of Kripke Platic set theory um, in, in this extended language um, with, um, with Ur elements that allows Ur elements. Um, and this, uh, this structure, there'll, there'll be the structure M um, that consists of, um, you know, the, under, the Ur elements of our, um, of our structure A um, and then there'll be this, um, we'll, we'll have an additional membership relation on these Ur elements. Um, so the Ur elements of our model will, will form kind of um, themselves a structure in the language of set theory. Um, and then um, A, um, A will be the sets um, of, our, um, um, of our model of Kripke Platic with Ur elements. Um, and then uh, we'll have these, uh, these function symbols F and P. So A will. Uh, so note that our axioms, um, uh, the axioms uh, of Kripke Platic with Ur elements that we'll consider will ensure that um, uh, the second um, membership relation E is a membership relation on the Ur elements. Um, and then the usual membership relation um, is a membership relation that can, um, that can hold between Ur elements and set, Ur elements or sets and sets. Okay. Um, so these are these are kind of the versions of um, of Kripke Platic set theory with Ur elements that I want to consider. Um, so the theory um, KPU cov or KPU cover um, will be the will be the L star theory um, that consists of the axioms. Well, I mean we have an axiom um, saying that there's at least some some sets in our domain, so not everything is an Ur element, um, and that um, nothing can belong to an Ur element. Um, and then we have extensionality for sets, um, pair, union, bounded L star separation, um, bounded L star collection, um, and pi one L star foundation. Um, and then in addition, so those, um, those three axioms there um, can be seen as kind of the analog um, of the axioms of Kripke Platic set theory in this extended language L star. Um, so we then have an axiom which tells us uh, how the function symbol f behaves. Um, and so f is going to be a function that sends Ur elements um, essentially to sets corresponding to their extension according to the, the E um, membership relation. So, um, so you know, all remember that um, so our Ur elements in this in these structures are going to um, going to actually um, themselves be a, a structure in the language of set theory. Um, so this function f is going to send our elements um, to sets, um, to a set whose members is exactly the things um, that are E members um, of, uh, of that Ur element in the, in the Ur element structure. Um, so this is what's going to allow us to kind of um, talk about um, Ur elements uh, in, in the set theory. Um, so then, uh, then I want to also talk about an extension of this um, uh, uh, of this theory, KPU cover, which I'll call KPPU cover. Um, so this is uh, uh, the L star P theory um, obtained from a KPU cover um, by adding um, delta naught L star P separation, um, a delta naught L star P collection, pi one L star P foundation. Um, and then an axiom just saying that this, this function symbol P um, really is um, a power set function um, on the sets, right? Um, so this, I mean, you can think about this as the analog of, um, without infinity, the analog of, um, of KPP in this context where we have um, or this, these are elements and this, um, this function symbol F. Um, so what I wanted to note was there's nothing amongst um, these um, these axioms that tells us that our Ur elements actually form a set. Um, and the, in the models that we're interested in, um, the Ur elements won't be a set of our model. 
Um, so they'll they'll actually form a proper class. Um, and uh, you know, and yeah, so that there's um however um it's this function symbol capital F um that allow us to you know to kind of um um to nevertheless talk about um the your elements in some meaningful way. So um um so what um what this capital F does is it means that we can um if we're given um some kind of delta naught formulae um expressed in this language involving this E membership relation, so in the kind of the language of the the ur element structure, um, we can transform that delta naught formula formula um, into a um, into a, a bounded L star formula, um, which uses the kind of the the usual membership relation of our of our Kripke platic with ur element structure, you know. So um, for all x e y um, can just be written as um, for all x in f of y, right? Um, and this will this will give us some kind of interaction between the elements and the uh, um, and the sets. Cool. Um, so now, if we've got um, if we've got a structure, um, an L star structure um, that's um, that's well founded um, and um, and satisfies all the axioms of KPU cover, um, then we say that this structure A um, is is an admissible set covering M. Um, so what do I mean by well-founded? Um, well, I just mean that this, this membership relation here is well-founded. Um, I don't, I'm not making any claims about this, this other E membership relation that holds amongst the R elements. Um, and then if, um, if I've got an L star P structure um, that's well-founded and a model of KPPU cover, um, then I'll call this, um, um, this structure um, a power set, a power admissible set covering M. Um, and now, um, so Barwise defines um, the cover um, of uh, uh, of an L structure M uh, is the smallest admissible set um, which uh, which covers M. And this, uh, if it exists, um, this uh, this smallest admissible set covering M um, will be denoted cover of M. Right. Um, so suppose I've got a, um, so, so the idea is once this, um, you know, as usual, um, this kind of, um, uh, this, if I've got an admissible set covering M, um, then I can use this admissible set um, to encode, um, you know, an infinitary language um, and hopefully use Barwise's compactness theorem to kind of, um, you know, to kind of do things with this infinitary language, right? So that, that's exactly the goal. Um, so I just wanted to set out, you know, the, the infinitary language that I'll code in the cover um, that I'll be interested in. So I want to, uh, I want an infinitary language that allows me to produce end extensions um, of the model of M. Um, so uh, I just want kind of um, an inf the infinitary language coded in the cover or coded, I suppose I've got a power admissible set A, um, then I, I want um, I want the infinitary language encoded in um, A um, that includes the membership relation, um, constant symbols um, for every point A and M. So I've got enough constant symbols to express um, the elementary diagram of M, um, and then an additional constant symbol C that I'll use to kind of produce my non-trivial end extensions essentially. Um, and then with this language, um, I'll then want to make use of the following, um, uh, the you know, the Barwise compactness theorem that I'll state just in terms of this language. Um, so if I've got a um, uh, if I've got a countable power admissible set A covering M, um, and T uh, is a um, uh, is a theory um, in this infinitary language that's coded in A. Um, that sigma one L star P definable um, over this power admissible set A. And uh, if I know that every subset of this theory T um, that's contained in, in the power admissible structure A has a model, um, then um, I know that T has a model. So this is, this is just the Barwise compactness theorem um, for this admissible structure. Um, so the question now is, um, is you know, I mean, 
does this does the cover um, under what circumstances do we know that the cover um, of a of an L structure exists? So um, uh, so let uh, let M be an L structure um, that satisfies uh, Kripke platic set theory um, plus uh, power set um, plus delta naught p collection um, plus sigma one um, p foundation. So that's uh, so I want to suppose I've got a model of um, a possibly well, you know, a, a non-standard model of uh, of this theory here, right? It's kind of uh, I mean, what I'm saying is only interesting if um, if the model M is non-standard. Um, so what we can actually do. So what um, what Barwise uh, does in his book is he shows that actually um, the cover that one can actually get um, get one's hands um, you know concretely on the cover. Um, uh, of M within M, like working within M itself. So you can essentially, you can get your hands on the cover um, by kind of interpreting um, a structure that satisfies almost all of the axioms of, um, of KPU cover um, inside M, um, and then using that interpretation to obtain the cover of M. Um, so I just wanted to kind of, um, uh, you know, kind of go over this, um, um, this kind of construction in Bauweiser's book. Um, so working in um, working inside M, we can actually kind of interpret um, what you know a struct a an L star, star P structure um, that almost satisfies um, KPPU cover. Um, so um, so working inside M, we can define um, unary relations N uh, and set. Um, and then uh, binary relations, um, I'll call it curly E, I suppose, and um, E prime. Um, and then unary functions, um, F bar and P. Um, and so how do I want to define these things? So the idea is, um, is together um, that, these, um, the, that these definitions will form, you know, give me a, um, a, an L star P structure inside M. Um, so first of all, I mean, I can make a copy of everything um, in M um, by labeling it with the label zero. Um, and then I can just say that all of these things that I've labeled with the label zero um, are or elements. Um, and then there's an obvious way, right, that once I have all, all, a copy of everything in M labeled with zero, um, I can easily define, you know, a membership relation on these or elements um, that in fact is exactly the same as the membership relation of M, right? Um, so do that. Um, and then sets, um, the sets, or set, the predicate set, um, is then defined recursively. You know, so this is, I suppose, the same way you'd, I mean, you know, the same, same way you'd define P names um, if you're doing forcing or something like that. You know, you, um, um, you know, you, uh, you say that the sets are things that are labeled with the label one um, and uh, contain, um, you know, and only contain things that are sets or, or elements, right? And this way you get you get some kind of recursive definition of what a set is. Um, and then you can um, define, again, a membership relation um, between sets um, by looking at the things that they label and trying to work out you know, and looking at what's it, what's in those things. So there's kind of a an obvious um, an obvious definition of membership relation um, on the sets. Um, and then we just define um, we define these um, this function symbol bar f and p um, to kind of do what we want it to do. So remember that uh, that capital F was this function that we wanted to send or elements um, to sets corresponding to the e extensions of those or elements. Um, so we can just, um, you know, we can do that with this definition here. So we just get, um, you know, we get a make sure that it's labeled one and then contains all the error elements. Um, and then um, we can define the, the, um, this P bar to actually correspond to the power set, um, the, the power set function on sets. Um, so note that all, I mean, all these things are, um, all these predicates are simply definable. Um, N, E prime, curly E and bar F are all um, a delta naught formulae. 
um, and um, bar P is a delta naught P formula and um, set is defined by a recursion that makes it a, a sigma one formula. Um, and this means that, um, you know, what, what, what we end up with is we end up with an L star P structure um, that almost satisfies all of the axioms of um, KPPU cover. So except for maybe some of the foundation. Um, and um, I note also that the ur element structure of this, um, this interpretation um, of this kind of KPPU cover type structure um, is actually, a, you know, clearly isomorphic to the your original model M. A note here, obviously, that, um, you know, these are elements are not realized as a set inside this, this structure, clearly. No. Cool. Um, so then, um, then Barwise um, showed that, um, uh, that you can then obtain the cover. So remember that the cover has to actually be an admissible set. Um, so, I mean, it's, if, if M is a non-standard model, right, then this, um, I mean, it's very likely that this interpretation will be a non-standard model of, um, of KPPU cover, or, you know, something just a little bit less than KPPU cover. Um, so what, uh, what Bawais showed was that, in fact, if you take the well-founded part um, of this interpretation, um, then what you obtain is the cover um, of the structure M. Um, and what's more, like now, um, now that you actually have your hands concretely um, on, on, on this thing, which is, you know, you, I mean, you actually have kind of the cover of M in your hands, um, it's now pretty clear that um, you also get this second property um, of the, the cover, which I've noted here. Um, and, and, you know, this is the essential feature, this minimality feature of, um, of the cover. Um, means you know this this feature is like what you need in order to drive your your compactness arguments right so you know because the cover um is is kind of the minimal admissible set um if i've got any um theory in this in this infinitary language coded in cover um that in fact belongs to the cover um then if i look at um if i look at kind of the um the things the constant symbols from m um, that are mentioned in this theory, um, then these things actually must be realized as a set um, in M, right? You know, so this is this is kind of the the minimality that you you need in order to kind of do your do your um, uh, do your compactness arguments, right? Um, and so Rasser noted that um, um, that in fact this construction works um, even so it works uh, to produce the cover. I mean, if you just uh, delete the the interpretation of the the power set operation from um, the interpretation I gave on the previous slide, um, you see that um, you know this this all kind of works um, in the theory Kripke platic set theory plus some um, um, plus sigma one foundation. Um, so what we've um, what we've been able to do is show that um, well, so now I mean. Um, if you actually start with this, um, with more set theory holding an M. So if you, uh, if you start with M that satisfies um, power set um, plus delta naught P collection plus sigma one P foundation, um, then uh, you, you get the power set um, holding in the cover of M. Um, and what's more, if you expand the language um, of, um, of the cover to include this power set operation, um, then you in fact get all of um, um, all of the you know all of the axioms of um, uh, of kind of KPP U uh, holding inside inside the cover as well. Um, so in other words, the cover um, if M satisfies um, KP plus power set plus delta naught P collection plus sigma one P foundation, um, the cover can the language of the cover can be expanded with a power set operation. Um, to make it power admissible. Um, so this now drives, a, this now is the kind of the tool we can use um, to do kind of compactness arguments to produce end extensions. Um, so this means that if we, um, uh, if we have any recursively enumerable L theory um, that contains this Kripke platic plus power set uh, plus delta naught P collection plus sigma one P foundation. Um, and um, if M's any uh, countable model of S, 
um, then there exists uh, an L structure N um, that uh, is a power set preserving end extension of M, satisfies all the axioms in S, satisfies everything in S, um, and is, uh, is non-trivial, um, right? So in fact, um, we can do better. There's actually a, um, a point in, um, in N um, that contains all of the points in M. So this would, um, um, you know, the, yeah. so this, uh, this obviously implies that N is a, um, at least a non-trivial N power set preserving end extension. Um, so then, you know, as I indicated, this is just done um, using kind of the, the obvious compactness argument. Um, so we just, um, we'd consider the theory that kind of expresses the elementary diagram of M um, and then, um, it says that, you know, no new elements of sets are added. Um, and then this third thing here, or scheme of axioms, um, says that no new subsets are added. Um, and then, um, and then you say that C, um, contains all the points from M. Um, so, um, so note that this third, uh, third scheme here, I mean, you kind of, it looks like you need the power set operation, um, to make this scheme kind of sigma one definable, right? Um, so, um, you know, so this theory is uh, is sigma one L star P definable um, over this um, this kind of expanded cover, um, and then uh, then the minimality condition um, allows you to show that it's finitely consistent, um, and therefore by the Barwise compactness theorem, it has a it has a model. Um, so this, um, you know, so that um, this result appears to use, um, you know, um, sigma one uh, p foundation. Um, so this led us to kind of investigate um, the status of sigma one p foundation um, in the theories most uh, and KPP. Um, so um, so we were able to show, in fact, that um, that actually um, sigma one p foundation um, is a consequence of k is is provable in KPP. Um, so this is a um, in, you know, refined a result of Michael Rutchens. Um, so uh, there's no hope that, um, that sigma one P foundation is provable in most plus pi one collection. Um, in fact, one can see that, um, that most plus pi one collection plus sigma one P foundation um, proves the consistency of most plus pi one collection. Um, However, uh, we were able to obtain um, this result that I think is kind of interesting, actually. Um, so uh, even though um, sigma one P foundation over most plus pi one collection proves the consistency of most plus pi one collection, um, every omega standard model of most plus pi one collection um, satisfies um, sigma one P foundation. Um, and this, um, you know, this looks weird, right? Because sigma one P foundation is kind of a statement of transfinite induction, right? Um, but in some sense, this kind of says that, well, over the theory most plus pi one collection, um, it doesn't give you any kind of transfinite induction at all. All the induction it gives you is just induction over the natural numbers, which I, I mean, I thought was kind of, um, kind of odd, right? Um, but anyhow, um, so I think I've run out of, um, run out of time or uh, I'm close to running out of time. Um, so I'll just mention that, um, so this uh, allows us to answer, give an answer to the first question that I, uh, I raised. Um, so if, uh, so we can show that um, Friedman's theorem in fact holds for every countable model, um, not, just, um, not just the countable transitive models. Um, so if, uh, if M is any countable model of KPP, um, then, um, then M has a, has a topless rank extension um, that's, uh, that also satisfies KPP. So this, um, so you can just see, so by Friedman's result, obviously we only need to, to do this for non-standard M because uh, Friedman's already done it for standard M. Um, so then we can use this, uh, this um, the previous result I mentioned, the Barwise compactness theorem. Um, to end extend um, M, and get, produce a power set preserving end extension of uh, N of M um, that's non-trivial. 
Um, and then there are two cases to consider, right? Um, either this N is a blunt extension, um, but if it's a blunt extension, then we know that M satisfies full separation. Um, and this means that we can use Paul's self-embedding result um, to get a topless power set preserving end extension. Um, and otherwise N must be a topless rank extension and we're done. Cool. And then um, similarly, we, we get that every countable model of most plus pi one collection plus sigma one P foundation has a topless power set preserving end extension. Uh, and this is essentially exactly the same argument as I used on the previous slide. Um, and this means that every omega standard model of most plus pi one collection, um, countable omega standard model of most plus pi one collection um, has a topless power set preserving end extension. Cool, sorry for um, exceeding the time by a couple of minutes. Most impressive. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I guess we should uh, we should clap. So let's uh, clap, clap <laughs> emojis there. So, so okay. So thank you. Um, are there uh, Ed, you know anyone want to go first with questions? Well, to get things started, I mean, I I don't have a question as such, but. I remember working on these things many moons ago. Uh, you know, end extensions, ranks extensions, infinitary languages, compactness theorems. But boy, I had no idea of how far this could go. Thanks. All right, I think there's a lot more. There's a lot more there as well, right? I mean, there's a lot. There's a. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in in Bauweiser's book. I think that. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, and, and this um, you know, recent stuff that Ali has been doing as well is quite, you know, so you know, um, that I, I think you know, kind of generalizes um, you know, notions of um, you know, saturation and and things mm -hmm. like that that are, I mean, also interesting directions to. Mm -hmm. to go. Now, one of the fundamental results uh, involving model theory and uh, um, admissible sets uh, well, that was uh, Veal's, what we used to call Veal's lemma, I don't know if you still do, which is that the standard part of a model of KP is a model of KP. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Is that, was that used here implicitly or explicitly? Uh, yeah, so absolutely. And this is what's causing the problems or in some sense the, uh, you know, this is what, what, what not, I mean, not the problems, but I suppose the gap here is, um, okay. So, um, you know, so to do this, right. So we go back. Yeah, so um, um, so this result here is obviously using using this lemma that uh, if you take the well-founded part um, of this kind of interpretation of this structure, um, then um, you know, then you obtain you obtain a, a, an admissible set. So a model of um, mm -hmm. this is an admissible set. So this is uh, this is using that lemma absolutely. Um, so mm -hmm. we need right. Um, we need kind of the same thing to hold. Um, you know, with this power set operation. Um, so we need it to be the case that when you um, when you take the well founded part um, of uh, you know of this expanded um, expanded structure. Um, you get um, the additional um, kind of collection and well, collect collection is the problem, right? Um, involving this power set operation also hold, holding in the well-founded part. Um, and it's this that, uh, you know, appears to really be requiring the Sigma 1P foundation. So this, this is where the Sigma 1P foundation comes in that you need, it looks like, it looks like you really need the Sigma 1P foundation you know, to get that version of the dilemma that you're um, that you're talking about, kind of moving, and the weird thing is, like, this is and this is absolutely like doing my head in. Um, you know, if I take, if I just, you know, obviously as an experiment, when I was trying to kind of like, you know, work out what was going on, I um, I ignored the fact that I was working in, um, you know, Kripke-Platic with the elements for a while. Right, you know, to try and 
get my head around what was going on. And I have a proof, uh, I have a proof that every, um, every, the well-founded part of every non-standard model of most plus pi one collection is a model of KPP. So I can, I can make the proof work if I don't have the ur elements, you know, running, running around there, if I'm just working in pure set theory, but um, it's in with, with the ur elements there, and especially these ur elements um, that form a proper, a proper class, um, I, it's, it seems to use sigma 1p foundation, which is uh, genetic. Alas. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, sorry. It's, uh, thanks. Okay, um, other questions? I don't really have a question. I just want to say I was really excited to see the CSB at Fiscal cover. It seems to be underused and there's cool stuff to be done with it as you've shown. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're right. There seems to be no, no, I mean, it's, I mean, it was used obviously by Barwise to, to kind of prove his extension. Right. Results and by Reser to kind of get these end extensions of, of KP. But I, do you know of any other use or? Uh, I mean, I used it at one point. I don't know if that's too much self-promotion to say, but I don't really know of much beyond that. What did you use it for? Uh, getting like uh, non-minimality results from models of second order set theories. Okay, okay, okay. Can you do, what? what's the name of your, sorry. Uh, the name? paper is something like minimum models of second order set theory or something like that. I think I've found um, I have seen it. Thank you very much. But no, yeah, like I was excited to see because, like, you know, I did some stuff with it and I have seen basically very little else use it. So I was very excited to see you use it there. So I'm unpacking my things, aren't I? Just. Um, Minimum models of second order set theory. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Back when you were a lowly grad student. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ali seems to have a question, but I can't hear you. Um, maybe you can put it in the chat. I'll, I'll read it. Yeah. Should I stop sharing my screen? Stop sharing. Oh, I'll, I'll stop the recording. 